at the end of the first day, I just got all my nerve together. I was just terrified to do this, but I knew I would never have another chance like this. But I, I cornered Spielberg in the office with a copy of World Enough in Time of my book. And I said, you know, this must happen to you all the time. I'm sorry if I'm being too forward, but I wrote this novel. It was just published by Del Rey. Would you consider reading it and making a movie out of it? So, so like, right. Uh, he's, but he was very gracious and said, well, I'll take it home and put it on my shelf and get to it when I have a chance. And, you know, I sort of knew what that meant, but okay. And he was being very nice about it. And I, I felt like proud of myself for getting, having the guts to do that. And then the next day, uh, a PA during filming, I was all in my hazmat suit again. PA ran up and said, Mr. Spielberg wants to see you. I was, you know, scared that I had done something wrong during the previous take. And I went in to see him and he said, well, I, I read the first chapter of your book uh, and I really liked it. And I said, so you want to make a movie? And he said, no, but um, I'm just wrapping Poltergeist at the other other end of the lot. And actually, you know, Poltergeist was universal, I think. Um, or was it Warner? I can't remember now. But he said, if uh, I, I need someone to do the novelization in a hurry. Um, we had some issues with the uh, uh, the last novelizer and we're in a, a tight time crunch. So we need it done in a month. If you can promise me that you can finish writing the novelization in a month, you got the job. So I said, I mean, I didn't know if I could. I'd, I hardly knew what a novelization was at that point. And I, I, I knew I was scheduled to work all month in the ER, but I said, yes, on the spot, I can do it. So I got all my friends to, to cover my shifts for me in the ER. And, and I spent uh, the next you know, 28 days in his office at MGM. I had a copy of the script. Um, it was close to a final shooting script, but I think not the final shooting script. Uh, and I used that basically as an outline, as a skeleton plot outline. Uh, so I know, you know, this happens and this happens and this happens. I used some of the dialogue from the movie, some of the dialogue I, I didn't care for, so I used my own dialogue. Um, and whenever I write, whether it's my own book or a novelization, my first draft is basically a skeleton draft anyway. It's pretty much kind of just the plot line of the story. Uh, you know, what happens, who comes into the room, they have a talk about this, uh, and it's very, very pared down. Um, and once I have that, then I use that as the, the sort of basis for going back and really fleshing it out and, and developing it with uh, character motivation and backstory and internal monologue and, and relationships. So, so I, and I didn't have any dailies, but I had production stills. So they gave me the, the script and a lot of stills so I could see what the, the creature looked like. I could see what the house looked like when I described it and things like that. It took me about two weeks to write that. Uh, and uh, Frank Marshall was, was at that point our, my go-between to Steven. Uh, Spielberg was so wrapped up with being on the set when shooting E.T. still, he didn't have a lot of time to spend with me. But Frank had uh, uh, sort of more, uh, more free time, at least time to spend with me. So I gave him the first draft uh, uh, and he, you know, he, he read it that night really quickly and, and Spielberg wrote, read some of it and relied on Frank's assessment. And they said, it's great, uh, go ahead and do a second draft now. And I said, well, for the second draft, I'm wondering, um, if I can bring in anything else that I want to. Uh, there were a lot of other ideas that it had brought up for me because I had done ESP research in medical school. So I wanted to bring some of that research in, some of those ideas uh, and give them to the, the researchers in the movie uh, and, and develop other aspects of the relationships and the characters as well. And, and I had thought of additional scenes that weren't in the movie that, that uh, just came to me that I thought this would be a really cool scene. So he said, sure, go for it, do whatever you want. We like the first uh, draft so well, we trust you now and uh, go ahead and do that. So I did. I had done ESP research. So in terms of the, uh, the, the, the scientific and intellectual foundation of it, that was all there. And I drew from, from uh, aspects of my research. Um, for, for the other, it's, it's just a matter of, of diving down into my fantasy life, which is very rich and and uh you know even my some of my reasons for going into emergency medicine 
was its wizard-like aspects that I felt like a, a sorcerer, that I, people were dead and I could actually pull them back from death. It was a very uh, potent and magical kind of aspect uh, to medicine. You know, people talk about the laying out of hands as a big part of, of medicine, of, of the healing aspects of medicine that are not simply related to, to, uh, to drugs and high-tech kinds of things. Uh, and an extension of the laying out of hands is, is, is this sorcerer-like aspect. So, so, you know, a lot of my internal life has been lived in the fantasy world anyway, and it wasn't that difficult for me to dive down in, into it. And in fact, there were times when I was writing when I really just scared the bejesus out of myself in the writing of it. Uh, and, and on occasion would have to stop and stand up and, and kind of walk off the willies it was, in, it was in the Spielberg's conference room at MGM and it, the room was surrounded by old school video games, console video games. So whenever I was either having some kind of writer's block or really scared, I would get up and play Missile Command.